If you're looking to learn to fly in 2023, you need to know about the five big student fails. These are the five reasons why people either don't complete their flight training or spend too much time and too much money doing it. So join me on the Student Pilot Podcast where we're going to go into detail about it and tell you how you can avoid these five big student fails. Welcome to the Student Pilot Podcast. My name is Simon Callis, a flight school owner. Each week, myself and my guests will be talking all things flight training and beyond to help inspire, motivate and support you on your journey to becoming a private or commercial pilot. Okay, so Happy New Year, everybody. If you're already learning to fly or you're looking to learn to fly this year, this information is going to be really beneficial to you. So we've got five things that we find in general are either the reason why people don't finish their training at all and they give up on their training or it takes them way longer than it should do and results in them spending way more money than it should do as well. Okay, so first thing is money. Okay, now money is always lack of financial planning. Okay, always. So never ever start to learn to fly without getting yourself a financial plan. And that's going to involve you going to flying schools and asking some questions. Okay, so I'm going to give you some information here. These are the key things that you should be asking your flight school. So you need to know about the aircraft hire, how much that costs, if there's any additional fuel surcharges there may be at the moment, if your instructor fees included in that if you need to pay for landing fees. Then we're looking at medical certificate. How much does a medical certificate cost? Now that tends to be the same around most places because it's the doctors themselves that set the price on that. Um, Ground school, flight equipment, tests and exams, and licensing paperwork at the end. So those are the key areas. So aircraft hire, instruction fee, landing fees, medical, ground school, equipment, Test and exams and licensing and paperwork. So those are the key areas that are going to contribute to the cost. So I wouldn't focus too much on just the hourly rate of the aircraft. You need to find all these contributing factors to work out yourself a budget. Now, if you want detailed information about how to budget, we have a, a complete episode on how to do that. So if you like to watch us on YouTube, if you go to Almat TV. Um, and our YouTube channel is at Almac Flying Academy. So if you're working from a monthly disposable income, what I would say is take all of those contributing factors into account, set yourself a budget, and you need to be able to afford to fly a minimum really of twice a month. If it's once a month, don't do it at all, okay? I would strongly recommend that you leave it until the time is better. So next thing is don't fly outside your financial means. If you, f- if you fly outside of your financial means, all that's going to happen is that you will run out of money and you're going to stop, start, stop, start with your training, which means there will be breaks in your training where you're not flying at all and you will lose some of the skill that you've acquired during your previous lessons. So all it does is set you back a little bit each time while you're re cooping those things. So next thing with your budgeting is choose an aircraft type that fits as well. Make sure that your aircraft is suitable for your budget, not just for your size. Okay, it's really important that your aircraft suits your budget. And be realistic about the amount of training hours you're going to need to train. Um, A lot of schools advertise the fact that the PPL is 45 hours. It's not It's a 45 hour minimum course. It could take you 80 hours. Depends on your ability, generally how frequently you fly. Um, But the national average is closer to 60 hours, so don't plan for 45. Like I say, if you want detailed information about how to budget for your uh, flight training, then go to YouTube or go to Apple Podcasts, anywhere you, you get your podcast fixed, we will be there, the Student Pilot Podcast, and there's a whole episode about how much a PPL or LAPL course costs. So next is the medical. Now the key message with the medical is sooner rather than later. Let's take the worst case scenario. Imagine you've been learning to fly and you've spent maybe a thousand, two thousand pounds already before you get your medical. Then you find out that you're not able to get a medical. You just wasted all that money and it can't contribute to anything. So the key is get your medical as soon as you can. So worst case, you fail. You haven't wasted a load of money. Best case, you pass. 
or middle of the road, let's say you have a few complications and the doctor says, look, it's likely to take a few months to get these sorted out. Maybe you've got to have a few tests. You've got time to do that before you start a huge chunk of flight training. So you can then schedule around that to avoid overspending on flight training where you can't move on in the course. Good thing about this as well, if there are any problems that arise, then you can deal with your AME and say, right, you know, what do we need to do to get to this stage where we've got this medical? And you might say, right, you need to do this test, this test, we need to send this paperwork off, you've got a bit of time to sort it out. So consistency. Consistency, in my opinion, is the key to it all. So running out of money, we're back to that money thing again. Running out of money is gonna to lead to inconsistent flying because you're gonna be stop, start, stop, start. Being prepared for your flight lesson. So if you're the type of student who turns at five minutes before their flight lesson, trying to rush through the planning, get into the airplane and go, all that's gonna happen is you're not prepared for your lesson. Your flight lesson's gonna be cut short because you needed extra briefing time, so you might not complete the exercise you wanted to do. So it's gonna to lead to this inconsistency with your flying. So you need to get there, be prepared, so read the books that you need to prior to the lesson. You know, you can ask your instructor that, what do I need to read upon prior to the lesson? Come in early, get prepared, and also get relaxed for your, your flight lesson, because that means then you're in a head space to do it. So if you do that consistently, then you're consistently setting yourself for, for a good lesson. If you consistently come in late and unprepared, you're gonna be consistently setting yourself for, for a bad lesson. So choose the consistent you wanna be. Do you wanna be consistently good or consistently bad? I know which one I'd rather be. So always sticking to the same aircraft type, this is a big one. I think this is one of the most important things about the consistency. Each aircraft type is slightly different, so they'll be procedurally different. They might even fly a little bit differently. Obviously the controls do the same things, but they are fundamentally slightly different. Now when you've learned to fly and you're no longer learning to fly as such and you're just learning a different type, it's much easier to fly different types of aircraft. But whilst you're still learning the art of flying, you need to be sticking to the same aircraft type. So pick one that fits your budget and stick with it till the end. Finding the right instructor, I would strongly advise for consistency that you fly with as few instructors as possible. Now it's pretty unrealistic in most places that you're gonna fly with one instructor. So consider you might have to fly with two or three or so, but make sure that you only fly with instructors you like flying with who make you feel confident about what you're gonna do. So in order to consistently learn, you need to be flying with the same people and what you need to do is kind of set your schedule around when these people are available to fly in order that you've got this plan. So when you turn up, you know who you're flying with, what the lesson's about, and you're not um, kind of giving yourself any new challenges. So every time you fly with a new instructor, you might feel like you're having to prove yourself a little bit to that person. They might not be fully up to speed with where you're at. So try and stick to the bare minimum of instructors, but communicate with those people regularly so that you've got your lessons planned and you're gonna make consistent progress. So we have a whole uh, episode on YouTube and on all the podcast platforms about how to choose your flight instructors and choosing a school as well that fits you. So you can check that out on the Student Pilot Podcast. So next thing with consistency is time. So we spoke about that briefly earlier. You need to allow for each flight lesson, I would allow about two and a half, three hours per flight lesson so that you can get there early, get planned up, allow yourself some time to relax, check the aeroplane over, do your lesson, debrief properly, and then relax before you go back. Now, if um, you have, um, a lesson that runs a little bit late as well. It allows you some slippage. So if the weather's not so good, it allows you a little bit of slippage in order that you can still fulfill the full flight time on your lesson. But make sure you allow the time for flight training. Weather is the next thing that's likely to affect your consistency. We worked out recently that 40% of your bookings may be canceled because of weather. So book contingency slots so that you are effectively closing up the gap between your next lesson if you don't fly. Confidence, so it's in there somewhere. So, can I really do it? That is a question that most people ask themselves at some point. So what you need to know about learning to fly is you don't know what you don't know, right? So a lot of it is just down to repetition. So you keep repeating an exercise and then all of a sudden it will click and you, you won't realize why you couldn't do it. So the main thing is don't give up. You know, there's gonna be things that 
you question why you're doing it but if you give up all that's going to happen is you will then more than likely want to carry on at some point and when you go back to it you're likely to be starting much further back from where you left off so if you quit flight training come back a year later you might be five ten hours behind where you were when you left maybe more um, it's quite likely you'll be more if you were earlier on in the course so don't give up keep persevering don't become overwhelmed Okay, overwhelm is a big thing with flight training. And also be a little bit resilient. You know, there's gonna be some things you do during the flight training where you, your instructor's gonna offer you some criticism and you, you, you just need to take it on board and say, okay, you know, they've got a point. I didn't listen to what they said there. I need to do this. This is what I need to do. Use the negative to make a positive. So support is the next thing. So everyone needs support when they learn to fly. So you're gonna need people around you to support you. So I highly recommend that you pick a school that makes you feel welcome, that you can ask any questions to, um, and they don't feel like stupid questions. They need to be there to support you. If you're afraid of asking them questions, you're not gonna get anywhere. The only question that's a stupid question is the one that you don't ask, okay? Secondly, make sure you go to a flying school with a friendly atmosphere, because what you'll find is with that, you've got people around you to talk to like other students if it's a friendly relaxed environment you're going to be sat in the waiting room and you might find another student there who flies on the same days as you You can make friends with that person and they, they might be an extra support to you they might be pushing you along saying you know don't worry about that that happened to me last week this week it's fine and likewise you can offer that same sort of support back to them so next thing is with support is accountability. So who is holding you accountable? So your flight school should be holding you accountable. They should be saying to you, look, you know, you haven't got this exam done yet, why not? You know, you, you can't get through this course without doing these exams. Why haven't you got that bit done yet? They should be pushing you a little bit. You don't want a flight school that's so relaxed that they're like, oh yeah, we'll do 40 hours of flight training and we won't do any exams. And believe me, that happens. In fact, I spoke to a guy in the last week who had done 41 hours, no exams. And that's because his instructor had just said to him, yeah, just keep flying, keep flying. He hadn't been saying to him, look, you, you can't do this until you've done this. You should have this knowledge by now. So make sure you're getting this advice. You know, if your if you're, um, flight school are just letting you fly, fly, fly and not encouraging you to do your exams, quite frankly, they're wasting your money. Okay, um, so are your flight school holding you accountable? Secondly, are you holding yourself accountable? You know, are you kicking your own ass? Are you sat there going, right, okay, my flight school's been badgering me for weeks about doing this exam. I know I need to do it. I should be doing it. Just get it done, right? You can't finish this course without doing the exams. So get them done. Hold yourself accountable as well. Perhaps you've got a family member as well that might be holding you accountable. So perhaps, you, you know, uh, say your dad or somebody like that's really keen for you to get it as well and they're pushing you along. Or perhaps, and this happens all the time, perhaps your mum and dad are actually paying for your flight training and they're holding you accountable because they don't want you wasting their cash. <laughs> so uh, is somebody else holding you accountable? Is your flight school holding you accountable? Are you holding yourself accountable? If so, you've got a fighting chance. If no one's holding you accountable because the flight school you go to and not pushing you to do the exams, you're not pushing yourself to do the exams, no one else is pushing you, well guess what? You probably won't make it, okay? So you need to hold yourself accountable. So, they are the five big student fails, okay? So like we said, we had money, lack of financial planning, medical, not getting it soon enough, then finding out you've had problems, consistency, you know, allowing too many things to interfere with the consistency of your flight training, confidence and support or lack of it. So these are the five things, if you drill down to all of the reasons why people generally um, either take too long, spend too much money, or actually give up on their flight training, one of these things would have been the contributing factor for them doing it, if not all of them, okay? So what I would recommend is take this advice, go on the podcast, okay, if you haven't already, subscribe to the podcast, um, it's on all of the main podcast platforms. If you prefer to listen to it, you can listen to it. If you want to watch it, go to YouTube. We're at Almat Flying Academy, and we have a channel called Almat TV. Uh, there's a playlist in there, Student Pilot Podcast. Go on there, absorb all of this content. We've got 
episodes about money we've got episodes about um, medical so there's actually an um, interview with the uh, doctor that we use AME Rob Simpson on there around the pilot medicals all heaps of stuff in there for people looking to learn to fly so make 2023 the year where you get unstuck with your flight training and get it done or if you're starting it make sure you've got the right advice first so let's see you pass in 2023 get on the podcast if you like this episode please like subscribe and ding the bell to receive notifications of the next episode